Okay, in this demonstration, we are going to continue on where we left off with the adding methods and constructors demo. And we are going to create a console application that consumes the class library project and the person class that we created in the previous demo. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a console app called batch orders. I've already downloaded the solution to the adding methods and constructors walkthrough. So once you've done that, you can open that solution and we are going to add a new project to the customer order solution called batch orders. So we're going to right click on customer orders and choose add new project. The new project that we're going to add is going to be a visual C sharp project. In the Windows folder here, we're going to choose console application. Now in the name field, we're going to call our console application batch orders. Notice it's in the same directory as our previous project, walk through simple class, customer orders. We'll click OK to create that project. And you'll notice in the Solution Explorer that the Business Rules Class Library project is bold. Previously, it was the only project in the solution, so by default, it was the startup project. But now that we have a console application that will be our user interface, we want that to be the startup project, since class library projects compile to DLLs, and DLLs cannot be created or launched directly. I'm going to right click on batch orders and choose set as startup project. Notice now that batch orders is bold and business rules is not. Now we have both projects in our single solution, but at this point batch orders has no idea what a business rule is. Also it doesn't know that there's a person class defined in the business rules project. So we're going to create a reference to the business rules project from batch orders by right clicking on the batch orders project and choosing add reference. In the solution folder here we find our list of projects and the only project that we have that we can make a reference to from our batch orders is the only other project in the solution, the business rules project. So we'll select that and choose OK. And now you can see under the references folder that we have our copy of the business rules DLL. So now our batch orders project knows all about person and employee classes as defined in the business rules project. So let's take a look at our program class and its main function. We're going to create an instance of our person class and display the results on the console. But first we're going to warn the user that we are about to create an instance of the default person class. We're going to do that with a console.writeline. And we are going to write creating a default person. And then we're going to use our business rules projects person class and we're going to set that into the obj person variable. We're going to set that variable equal to a new instance of the business rules dot person class and we're going to use the default constructor with no arguments. And then we're going to write the results of instantiating the person class onto the console. With the console dot write line, and we're going to say default person argument zero space argument one has been created. And then the argument zero will be obj person dot first name and argument one will be obj person dot last name. We'll add a console dot write line just to add a little white space between this statement and the next statement that we'll enter. And we'll add a console dot read key so that if we run the executable of this console app, it'll actually pause long enough for us to see the output before exiting. So let's run that and see what we get. It writes to the console, creating a default person, and the default person has been created. 
Now, our default constructor doesn't set the first name and last name properties, so it shows us a new person with no first name and last name because we have not yet set those properties. We'll press the space bar. The read key reads the space bar and exits the application. So between the write line and the read key line, let's add some code to create a person based on our specifications. So we'll prompt the user to enter their first name. With the console.writeLine, line, we'll say, please enter your first name and press enter. And then we'll read the user's entry from the console with a console.readLine. We'll set the results of that into the string variable, first name. And then because less typing means less typos, we'll copy and paste that code to create our last name entry. And then again, we'll use our business rule code in our person class to create a new instance of the person class, which we'll call obj person one And instead of default person, we'll call it custom person. And instead of obj person first name, it'll be obj person one first name and obj person one last name. And as we create the new instance of the person class, we'll use the overloaded constructor and we'll pass in our first name variable and our last name variable. You see that, boys and girls? Copy and paste is your friend. Less typing, less typos. Code is almost exactly the same. So now if we run this code, we get our default person, which has no first name or last name. We're prompted to enter our first name and then enter our last name, and then the custom person, Antoine Victor, has been created. So that was using our default and our overloaded constructors. Now we'll go ahead and make a quick call to the find method. So again, we'll prompt the user to please enter the first name and last name of the users that they want to search for. And again, we'll accomplish that by a little copy and paste magic. And then tell it to please enter the first name of the person to search for and press enter. We'll change the variable name to search first name and search last name and then we're going to execute the find method on obj person one to search for and find a new person. We're going to store the person that's returned from that find method in businessrules.person obj found. We'll set that equal to the results of executing obj person one dot find and passing the search first name and search last name arguments. And then we'll print the results with the console dot write line and we'll write found argument zero space argument one and argument zero will be obj found dot first name comma obj found dot last name move that down to the next line for the sake of readability. And now we can run that and see how we do. Again, we get our default person with no first name and no last name. I'll enter my first name and my last name to create our custom person, Antoine Victor. And then we'll enter the name of the person that we want to search for. First name, Joe. Last name, Blow. And we see that we have found Joe Blow. So in this demo, we created a console application that consumes our business rules class library application and creates an instance of the person class using the default constructor and then an instance of the person class using the overloaded constructor. And finally, we executed the find method.
To be notified when the next demo is available, please click the subscribe button.